Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with definitely not a knife video. I apologize for that. I, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> you guys have been asking for more watch content. I've been kind of resistant to it. Uh, there is not going to be watch reviews on this channel. I, I'm Other people do it better. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I do like sticking in some watch content every now and then. You guys have been asking for it. Now is a good time because I'm kind of between batches of review knives and it's a bit of a downtime for the knife industry because Blade Show's coming up soon and some people are holding back some stuff until Blade Show. So there's not as much new stuff coming out as there usually is. So now is a good time. But if you don't like watches, skip the video. It's fine. But don't automatically click down just because you don't like watches. That's rude. You don't have to do that. Just just don't watch this one. There's a huge knife video coming out tomorrow with many, many knives in it that I've spent two or three days trying to record properly. So I assure you there's plenty of knife content coming and I've got two more uh, reviews this week as well. So there's plenty coming. But today we're gonna be talking about a little watch collection update because it's fairly stable. There's two more maybe I wanna add eventually, but uh, pretty much I'm pretty much complete with my Seiko collection. Uh, I have a lot of Seikos. Um, why do I have such an affinity for Seiko? Uh, even though currently, especially modern Seiko is a very flawed company, but um, uh, it's mostly my father, to be honest with you. Uh, growing up, my dad wasn't a guy who had like eight, 10 watches. My grandfather was, uh, but my, my dad wasn't. And he always had Seikos, always really liked them. And there was a period in our lives, in my teens, that yeah, he had Rolex money and just refused to spend that much money on a watch. He, um, always wore Seikos, always said they were plenty good enough, and he was a pilot. He needed good, accurate, you know, timepieces, and um, he was very, very loyal to Seiko. Uh, for my 16th birthday, I got a quartz Seiko chronograph, a really nice one, uh, a bit dressy looking, but I really liked it, wore it all the time. Uh, now my son has it. He got it for his 16th birthday. All I've done is replace the battery, it actually sat with uh, no battery in it for probably 15 years and threw a new battery in it and it fired right up. And he, he has it now. Uh, maybe I've passed on the Seiko addiction gym. I don't know. He's bought a couple watches. None of them are Seikos yet, but I know he's eyeing a couple. So um, there's that. But uh, and I just always love the charm of Seiko. I don't, I don't know. Just their designs are just very, very charming to me. I mean, I, I only own one true luxury watch. I have a... Uh, um, Omega Planet Ocean. I love it. It's a fantastic watch. It's a beautiful watch. Uh, but I will say probably three or four of my Seikos, I would say, have a, just a bit more of that undefinable charm to them. Uh, they just do a great job of that. Part of it's, yeah, probably pulling on my heartstrings a little bit because of my dad. So, you know, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, it is a flawed company, uh, especially modern Seiko. And almost all, or all of my Seikos are pretty modern. Some of them are quote unquote what I would call like legacy models that have been made for a while, which is where you want to stick with Seikos now if you're buying them. Buy the some of the two, three year old models they still make. Those are still pretty reasonably priced. And that's the main thing that they're kind of messing up with in my mind is they're trying to move up market. Their prices have gone up and up and up. It's not all just that they've raised prices. Some of it is, but a lot of it is uh, Mark from Long Island Watch. Great place to buy watches and great channel to, to watch as well. Explained it well. It's not really... They've raised the prices in some places, but a lot of times the prices have gone up because they've been very aggressive about cutting out gray market, which gray market means buying from a non-authorized dealer. So those people were selling them very inexpensively. They've been very aggressive about cutting those people out to charge the proper price. So... The prices haven't gone up. They've just been enforced more in a lot of cases. But some of them have just, yeah, just gone up, which is kind of annoying. Um, more annoying <laughs> things like uh, the bezels don't align sometimes. Uh, often, I will say, not sometimes, often they don't. There's a joke on the Seiko forums. You know, if somebody posts a picture and says, is this real or not? I'm thinking of buying it used. Here's a picture. Is it real or not? They'll go, oh, the bezels are aligned. It's definitely fake. Or it's definitely, yeah, you know, because they're, they're aligned, uh, which is, it's not that bad, but uh, yeah, it's, it does happen quite a bit. Um, they're, they love that hard lux crystal instead of using sapphire like everybody else does in the higher price ranges. Uh, they're, they're, you know, fancy mineral crystal. They're trademark mineral crystal. I think it's a pretty good crystal. I've never really had a problem with it, but yeah, if you're price comparison stats, it's, it's 
shouldn't have sapphire on it, things like that. Um, the metal bracelets suck. Uh, you'll see I have eight Seikos, and none of them have the stock strap or bracelet on them. Some of their silicone straps are really, really nice, but I've changed them to other stuff anyway. But um, yeah, the bracelets usually suck. Uh, but still, I don't know. There's just that charm to them. I just really like them. If people see a Seiko on your wrist, they know it's it's a fairly expensive watch, but it's not a... You don't seem like a bougie jerk either. It, it's just a nice watch of the people, I guess is what I would call it. Maybe that's, you know, what I like about them as well. So um, that is it for that. Probably most of you have skipped past all this because you just want to see the watches. So we're going to switch to the tabletop and I'm going to... I'm going to show you my 8-watch Seiko collection. I do want to add two more. I guess I'll say this before we switch over. Um, I want to get a presage, probably a cocktail time. It's going to be my present to myself. I'm starting stand-up again in the next month or two, and I, I'm probably going to take my first you know, stand-up paycheck and probably buy a, a cocktail time. I really want one of those. Just I don't own a proper dress watch, so I want to do that. And my birthday is coming up at the end of the month. I'm probably going to buy a relatively inexpensive um, year of my birth watch. So I'll probably get a 1975. Um, there's some like kind of dressy looking old Seikos from that age that are 100, 150 bucks. Um, I'll probably I'll probably get one of those. I've never had a vintage watch, period, uh, except for the one that I've had that's just vintage because I've had it that long that my son has now. But uh, um, I, I'm, I'll probably get one of those. But other than that, pretty happy with the eight that I have. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we go into the collection. Uh, first up is the Seiko SNK 809. I'm trying to do these in ascending order of price, but once we get in the middle, the Seiko prices are all over the place on some of these. So there's going to be some overlap. So I apologize for that. But this is definitely the least expensive. When my wife bought this for me four or five years ago, it was definitely the least expensive. Uh, they were about $50 to $75. Now they're more like $100, $125. They have gone way up. Uh, it is the most basic Seiko automatic movement, mechanical movement. This is a pure auto. There is no hand winding. There's no hacking. You have to do, as we call it, you know, the Seiko shuffle. Uh, to keep it wound. Uh, it, once you put it on your wrist, it's fine. But, you know, when you wake up in the morning and it's died for a while, you got to shake it for a bit to get it going. Uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind the hacking or the lack of hacking, I should say, because I haven't needed to be accurate to the second to anything since like 2005. Hacking means when you pull the crown out all the way to adjust it, the second hand stops. So you can get it exactly, you know, where you uh, exactly on the second. Um, a, these are all mechanical watches. They're not that accurate. They're pretty accurate. All the ones here, even though Seiko will say that they, they give themselves a lot of fudge room, so they get a lot of flack for saying, this movement's only 15 to 30 seconds accurate a day. Well, they're usually four or five, but they give themselves a lot of fudge room. So, yeah, but it, either way, they're not that accurate. If I want to have something super accurate, I wear a quartz watch. Um, this is fine. I, I wear, honestly, a G-Shock that sinks to the atomic clock <laughs> if I want something super accurate. For most purposes, you don't need the hacking. It's completely fine uh, for day-to-day -day life. Get it on the right minute, and that's usually good enough. Um, this is the most basic version. I think the best value in these now in the, the old Seiko 5 SNKs is some of the dressier ones. Uh, they You can get a really classy-looking one with a polished case and a, ni a nice for Seiko bracelet for, yeah, 125 bucks. I think those are those are the best value. This is on a leather strap, which I do not remember where I got it from. I think it came with another watch, honestly. I'm pretty sure I didn't buy it, but uh, looks great. This is was a gift. There's only two other ones on here that I bought new. Um, most are bought used. I would say do that with Seiko's. You get a lot better deal. Um, you know, people think I spent a lot more on watches than I did, but a lot of these were trades or bought used and got super good deals from friends, but... Uh, yeah, this is, was a gift from my wife. I'll never get rid of it because it's a gift from my wife. And when she complains about um, watches, this was my first mechanical watch and she gave it to me. So, your fault, woman. Um, <laughs> next up, this is probably the one that means the most to me. Uh, this is not my father's watch, but this is the one that my sister and I both remember him wearing. Uh, when he passed away, I couldn't find it. Uh, looked all over, knew he had it, 
within a few months of him passing away. And then we looked all over and we couldn't find it. Um, but, uh, I went out and bought another one. This is a Seiko flight master. This is the SNA 411. I'm going to, there will be priority scene, little things flashing up with a few little stats on it. I'm not going to go crazy, but I want to at least give the reference numbers and rough prices. About 275 bucks for this. It's affectionately known in the watch world as the flighty, uh, primarily because of uh, TGV from Urban Gentry. Um, he loves his, as he's a huge evangelist for these, and I totally get why. Uh, I would have bought one anyway because it was my dad's, but it is a great, great watch. If you do not like busy dials, though, this is not the watch for you. There is a lot going on here. Um, I'm going to start the, the chronograph function on here, which I like a lot, and I use a lot when cooking and stuff. This isn't the only chrono I have. It's the only Seiko chrono that I have, but um, well, I guess you could kind of count another one here, but it's it's kind of in between but anyway i like just having the little dials moving and stuff when i'm cooking i think it's cool uh but yeah i do use the chrono function a lot now the flight computer is the thing that makes it super busy i call it a flight computer because i used to be a pilot so was my father that's why he had one of these uh slide rules what a lot of people call them but it is technically a flight computer um i do not remember how to use this i had a pilot's license from the when i was like 16 to like 20 21 maybe and I've completely forgotten how to use this. Uh, that knowledge has left my brain from hitting my head and beer, I guess, probably. <laughs> but uh, I have no recollection of how to use this thing. But, um, you know, I remember my dad using it. It does work. It's obviously friction because you can't have a notched, you know, bezel when you're trying to do that kind of stuff. But um, uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it does have one little party trick I like, and that's why I started the chrono on it because I like when you reset it. The actual seconds hand is over here on, on this dial. Uh, this main seconds hand is just for the chrono, but when you reset it, it does this. I'm sure there's no reflection on it. I just think that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know why. This is just a quartz movement, um, a mechanical, they usually just snap back. Uh, but this is just, I just like that. I like watching the little dials move on their own. I think it's cool. The pushers and the crown are both screw down. This is a 200 meter water resistant watch. I think it's kind of interesting because if you are a pilot and you are in need of a 200 meter water resistant watch, things have gone very badly uh, during your flight. But um, yeah, it does come on a bracelet, which is not garbage, but it's close to it. Uh, I put it on this Barton leather strap, this kind of aged leather. I really like the look of this strap and they're like 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, I like it so much, you will see one again later on in this video. Uh, this is a 21 millimeter. That's one thing people don't like about the flighty is it is a bit difficult to find stuff. It, I don't think it's too hard to find leather or NATO or something like that. But if you want to put like a, uh, a better metal bracelet on it, yeah, good luck. Uh, that's going to be pretty difficult. But um, I think I wore the regular metal bracelet on it for like the first month I had it. And then it's always just been on this and, um, I just love the way it looks. I think this dresses it up a little bit as well, but I wear this a ton, not a ton, but a, a lot often because of my father. So yeah, his birthday was just on April 1st. So I wore it that day and I wear it a lot when I'm cooking because I like the, uh, it's my favorite chrono that I have as far as just using the chrono. So if I want to chronograph, uh, this is the one that I grab. Uh, next up would be, now we're getting into the four of my Seikos that I, I definitely wear the most um, and interchangeable. Usually one of these four is more than often than not uh, on my wrist out of all my watches, honestly. Um, this is a monster. This is the newest generation monster. As I said before, I think uh, most of my, all of my Seikos are a pretty modern generation. This is the SRPD 27, about three to $500 uh, for our 36 movement. This one came on a rubber strap. I got it in a trade with somebody. Um, I, I traded a, a knife for it and uh, always wanted a monster. I, this is probably not the one I would have bought. I probably would have bought the one with the slightly blue face on the bracelet, but now that I have this one, I really like it. Slightly faux patina hands. It does have the blue Super Luminova, which I prefer to the green. Most of mine are green, but I have a couple that are blue. And I, I like that a lot. It's, I just like being able to see all these watches from here and out. You can just, they have great wound. That's one thing I like about Seikos. Uh, I wear glasses, as you could see in the intro to this, or contacts, and they're, it's pretty hefty uh, prescription. 
So at night when I don't have my glasses on or my contacts in, you could put Big Ben at the foot of my bed and I can't read it. So I really like a an analog watch with bright loom. I can see what time it is. I wake up a lot in the middle of the night. I want to see if it's okay to get up yet or not. I, I don't like sleeping. My body doesn't like sleeping. So I, I just want to know, is it okay to get up yet? So I'm looking at a watch a lot at night. So I, I do, it definitely lasts all night. All the ones from here on out, they last all night long. Um, and this one is a lot of loom, super bright. And uh, I like the look of the the bezel guard and stuff. I think that looks cool. Um, and it does have, some people don't like that the new monsters have the Cyclops under, they call it the candy bar because it covers both the day and the day. I like that because again, my vision's not awesome. So I wear um, the uh, progressive lenses now, basically, you know, the lineless bifocals, whatever. Uh, but still, it's still nice to have that where I can actually read the date easily. So I don't mind it. Uh, some people really, really hate that. Um, this one is, you know, a few of the Seiko quality things. You can see the bezel doesn't, and the chapter ring don't line up. The candy bar as they call it in the Cyclops, is a little bit crooked, but, you know, it's Seiko, that, that happens, but, you know, <laughs> I, you only notice it if you own it and you're looking at it all the time, no one's going to notice it, nobody's going to point it out, you know, in the mall, do we even have malls anymore, they're all closing, nobody's going to point it out at some future public gathering place we're allowed to go to, to say, hey, your watch alignment's all screwed up, but, I wear this a lot just because it's kind of a beater to me because I traded for it. I have virtually no money in it and um, I don't mind beating it around. It does not have the stock rubber strap on it. The stock rubber strap, actually, not too bad on this one, uh, but I like these stretchy French Paris straps. I'm not going to put every single one of these watches on my wrist to show you. I will some of the ones that are large because that's one thing Seiko does well. We'll get to that. But um, yeah, it's just, it's very comfortable on this little stretchy French NATO strap. This is not a good one. I need to get a better one for it. This was something off of Amazon. It's got that bond pattern. I want to get exactly the same pattern, but something a little higher quality and a little thicker. Uh, this is not a heavy watch, but I think it's a bit heavy for this thin of this thin of elastic. So I do want to get a better one for that. But um, next up, this is one I never thought I always wanted, but I never thought I'd be able to wear until I watched Nick Shabazz's video. This is the affectionately known Seiko Arnie. This is the SNJ027, the PADI version, which I believe stands for Professional Association of Diving Instructors. I hope I'm right on that. It has this kind of Pepsi dial on it. Um, I I really like it. It does. It, it's called the Arnie because Arnold Schwarzenegger wore it in five different movies, uh, variations of it. Never this Patty version, but he wore it in the, the Arnie in like five different movies. It's a 47 millimeter case, which never thought I would be able to fit that with my tiny six and a half to six and three quarter inch wrist. But that's one thing Seiko excels at is making big watches fit smaller wrists. It has these nice downturn lugs. I can't remember what the lug to lug on it is, but it's pretty small. See, drill lugs as well, so it makes it super easy to switch straps or bracelets, but I always keep it on some form of NATO-y thing. Uh, right now, it's and it's probably going to stay on, this Blue Shark pajama strap. I really like these a lot. Again, they're elastic and stretchy. And this is another watch that I wear as kind of a, a beater utility watch. Uh, it is in a digital... Any digi chrono, I guess, is what to call it. It does have a timing function on it. I don't usually use it. Uh, I just have it per pretty much permanently set to the day date. So, uh, yeah, this is still technically a chronograph, but um, I don't really use it that way. Again, screw down everything, 200 meter water resistance. Um, and you can switch this this uh, guard out to a metal one. You also see this sometimes called a solar tuna. But if they have the screen in them, most people just call them Arnie's. But it is technically, I guess, part of the, the tuna family. All of those names, by the way, don't mean anything. That Seiko didn't give those names. When you hear me say, you know, Arnie, Monster, Samurai, Turtle, Alpinist, it, that's, they don't call them that. Maybe the Alpinist they do, but uh, I don't think they call any of the other ones that. But what I like about it, again, my tiny little wrists, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, I have tiny little wrists. It, it doesn't look that dumb. It's big for sure. My wife definitely calls it obnoxious. But it's not that bad. Especially on this stretchy strap. Uh, 
I like that I can just wear a big Hulk and watch like that and not look too stupid. <laughs> so love the Arnie. And one thing I like about the Patty version, if you get it, the other ones uh, don't have this, but hopefully it'll show up because we have the lights on here. I guess I can flick them off if I have to, but let me charge up the loom here. Um, it does have... Is that going to show up? Yeah, it's showing up and up. It's got a two-tone loom, which I like. It's got primarily the blue that I like, but the minute hand and the pipper are green. It's a cool little thing about the patty. I didn't know until I got it, So, but it was a very pleasant surprise. So there is that. We are halfway through. Uh, number five is the Samurai. This is the SRPC-07. I do not like orange in my life. Except for watches and some cars. <laughs> but uh, this I got from uh, Dirk Warning. If you want to go check out his channel, I'll try to remember to link it down below. He does watches and knives. I got this from him. It came with both the original bracelet and, which is not great. I have it. Uh, it's never been installed on this watch. <laughs> but uh, he bought immediately. This is a strap code Hexad. And uh, it's great. Milled, clasped, lots of micro adjustments. So even though this is a very large watch and a pretty heavy watch, quite heavy watch, honestly, it's one of my most comfortable watches. You're looking at about 350 bucks around there for a Samurai. Um, the orange one, depending on where you look, some places the orange one is by far the cheapest, some places is by far the most expensive. So it seems to be drifting towards the more expensive. I don't think that they made as many of the orange ones. Perhaps they discontinued the orange one. I don't know, but I see the prices on the orange one creeping up and up. And um, knife content, Metal Complex has one. So not an orange one, though. He's got to save the ocean, I think. Um, but yeah, it's just it's my it's a flashy watch but i do like it and again like i said it's comfortable again a fairly large case in this 44 millimeter but again uh, they make it fit pretty well the way they do the lugs it does not look like 44 millimeters on my tiny tiny little wrist so uh can't complain about it. this is another one that shabazz this and the San, this and the arnie um I didn't think I'd fit either of them, and Shabazz reviews his watch. His wrist is just a little bit smaller than mine, and if he says he can wear it, then I try it out, and uh, yeah, really like it. And this Hexad bracelet looks a lot better because it's a very angular case, and the bracelet's very angular. The stock one is very rounded and just doesn't quite go with it, um, and it's just kind of crap. <laughs> but uh, um, Next up, this is a fairly recent addition, and this is something I definitely did just to... Uh, just to check a box. I've always wanted a turtle. Um, this is not the version of the turtle that I wanted, but it was such a good deal. I just couldn't pass it up. It came without the stock bracelet. This is again a strap code. This is a super O. The super O, the O standing for a word that strap code is not allowed to say because of Rolex. It rhymes with cloister. So um, yeah, but they're not allowed to say that word. So it has a super O bracelet, which is again, super comfortable. Always wanted a turtle. Didn't really want the gold one, but again, some, it popped up on somebody's Discord. And the for sale ad was like months old. It was like 200 bucks. And I was like, is it still available? And yeah, it was. A, a new turtle, this is the SRP775. They go for 350 to 400 bucks. So um, yeah, it didn't come with the original bracelet, but I don't care. I wouldn't have used it anyway. And um, I wanted to get it just to wear it. And this is another one too. Another very big watch. The Turtle 45 millimeters. It's even bigger than the Samurai. But they do such a good job. Especially this one with the cushion case. It just doesn't... It wears really well. And this is this is actually my most worn. I know I said that the last four were my... It, I was getting to the realm of most worn. Lately, the turtle has been my most worn, probably because it's one of the newer ones, but I would like to have a mini turtle someday. They make a smaller version of this. I would really like to have one of those someday, but it would be to replace this. It wouldn't be in addition to this. Like I said, I didn't want the gold, but now that I have it, I like it. It's kind of blingy. It's just enough bling, but it's not crazy. And again, the loom is great. And um, I wear this a lot, a whole lot. It came in absolutely perfect condition, just with the wrong bracelet. But, um... It's, it's really, really nice. And again, it's the, both of the, uh, the Samurai and this also both have that 
uh, the 4R35 or 4R36. 4R36 just means it's got the day and the date. 4R35 means it just has the date. Um, that same movement, and I've found it to be very, very good. And I know they claim 15 to 20 seconds a day. In reality, all of mine are 4 or 5. Um, now the next two, we're going to take a pretty big jump in price. We have uh, probably the closest thing to a dress watch that I own after I change the strap. This is a Seiko Alpinist. Again, the newest one. This is the SBDC 087. There's 2021 one, 2021 versions coming imminently. This is a 2020. Um, the black one. I got this from Shabazz for a ridiculously good deal. And uh, I love it. I've always wanted an Alpinist. Uh, you're looking at a, what's the 39 millimeter case. So again, for my wrist, it's just about perfect. A lot of people have a huge affection for the previous Alpinist, the Sarb. 17. Um, it is a gorgeous watch, but it's green, and I don't like green, so I've never really had the huge affection for it. When these newer ones came out, uh, the newer SBDCs, they were in multiple colors, and I really like this black one. And yeah, Shabazz had one, and he put it up for sale, and I, I got it. So, uh, and again, you're gonna, this is the repeat of that Barton, same Barton, like weathered leather strap. <laughs> I just really like it. Looks great. It did come in a metal bracelet, which is actually, honestly, fairly okay. Uh, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, for a, especially for a Seiko. But um, I like it better on this. It just dresses it up a little bit, and it's very shiny. It does have a compass in it that rotates, which is kind of neat. And that I actually do know how to use. I had to watch a video, but I do know how to use it. It's fairly useless in the general life, but but it's kind of neat. And it runs on this uh, other crown. Uh, this one is a uh, 6R35 movement, so 70-hour power reserve. So I like this and the one you're going to see coming up because you can wind them up and they can sit there all weekend and they're, they're perfectly fine. Um, it, again, I don't mind setting my watches, but... This is another one that people hate. They put a Cyclops on it. I've already explained why I don't mind the Cyclopses. And this one, everything's lined up. And it does have a sapphire crystal. This is an $830 watch. So if you want to know how much you got to spend to get sapphire from Seiko, $830. And then they start caring. Uh, but the backside is still hard legs. It does have a see-through case back, but it's still hard legs. So, um, okay. Uh, but... Yeah, I, did, I paid nowhere near that, not even half that. But it's still, it's a, it's a great watch to have, and I do, I wear out a lot. It is, I wore it on Easter, you know, to my in-laws because it's a nice looking watch. And, um, closest thing to a dress watch that I have, you get up close to it. It's just the finishing on it. It's just freaking gorgeous. I, I do really love the Alpinist. It, if I could, this isn't even close to one of my most worn watches, but man, if if I could only keep one. This would be very, very high up on the list. Now, next up is one that I just added yesterday. And this is one that I, I can't I can't quite call it a grail because it hasn't been out for that long. It's only been out for like a little bit over a year. But um, as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted it. A good friend of mine who has done a lot for the channel, donated a lot of knives to the channel, just been a really good friend and a great guy to the channel and he's on some rough times and he wanted to sell some watches and i wanted this one he offered it for a very 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 good price i shouldn't have spent the money on it but you know what he's he's helped out the channel so much i just i thought that was the best way i could give back i had it i i could replace it when the tax refund comes so uh that's what i did this is a 63 Moss reissue. Uh, this one in particular is the SPB 147. Um, wanted one of these since the first time I saw them, but they retail for about 900 for this version up to uh, about 11 or 1200 if you want to get one on a bracelet. Uh, this one originally came in a rubber strap. I didn't get it. I don't mind that because I'm not going to use it anyway, and it made it a lot cheaper. So uh, I trust the guy. So it was a no box, no papers, no no original strap deal so i got it for very very cheap and i i do love it it is it looks blackish at first but it's actually very brown um and we're gonna we're gonna clean this off a little bit here's some more knife content for you this is a um quiet carry cloth that i'm using so 
more knife content. And this is Sapphire. When you spend a grand on a Seiko, they do put Sapphire on it, which is nice of them. It is a, a gilt dial, my second uh, gilt dial Seiko. Uh, I, I I hate to keep quoting Nick Shabazz, but um, it, yeah, his uh, my favorite quote. He explains gilt as, it doesn't mean that it feels bad about what it did. It just means that there's some gold on it. <laughs> so, God, I, this, it's a, it's a damn fine dad joke. Uh, but again, the 6R35 movements, you have the 70 hour power reserve. It's 41 millimeters, so it fits my wrist perfectly. It's currently on this uh, strap code NATO. It's a strap code Orca NATO, one of their higher end NATOs. It's brown. It looks good. Um, not sure it's going to stay on that. I, I don't love NATOs. I'm going to put this on my wrist. Again, the small wrist. They just always feel a bit bulgy, even if I use the, that little trick, you know, in NATOs. To, if you wear them wrong on a small wrist, they fit a little bit better. But, um, yeah, just the watch the head looks great, but I don't know, it just sticks out a bit because of my small wrist. But it's on this for now. I have an Uncle Seiko rubber strap coming that looks fairly like the stock one, but a bit fancier. I'm going to try that. I did try it on a Barton silicon strap last night, and it... It, it worked fine. I don't like that strap because it's sticky, but um, it did look good. So that's probably what it's going to wind up on eventually. But, oh, I just, I really wanted one of these. It is kind of until you get into Grand Seikos. Um, and in the current stuff they make, this is kind of it. It is kind of the, the pinnacle, pinnacle Seiko until you start going into Grand Seikos. But it's basically a reissue of the first diving watch they ever did. So it's a very vintagey look. So I like the vintagey look uh, divers because they're not so busy that you can't dress them. You know, I could dress this up. I could put it on a leather strap. And over says, "Don't put, don't put divers on leather." It actually arrived to me on a leather strap, and it still looked great. It, I'm not gonna dive. I don't care. <laughs> it's just, if I, I have a whole lot of dive watches, but yeah, if if I find myself in need of 200 meter water resistance, um. I'm dead, and I don't care what time it is. So it's it's kind of, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I can put it on leather. It's not going to get wet. I don't even shower with my watches on. So, um, yeah, it, I don't care about water resistant that much or leather on a diver. Except for that on Instagram comments. People scream, leather on a diver, leather on a diver. Alarms will go off. It'll be a whole thing. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watch, and I'm very, very happy to have it. And I'm very happy to have helped my my friend out a little bit and and got something really awesome in return. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. That is it. Uh, that is all of my Seikos. Um, yeah, I'm not going to repeat Nick's don't get into watches because I don't agree with that. If you're smart about it and you buy used, it's fine to get into watches. Uh, it doesn't have to cost you a ton. You can get into cheap Seikos. It doesn't have to be a thing. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.